Welcome to the Real Estate Fight Club, a podcast for agents where you'll witness a battle of opinions about topics affecting your real estate business. Now, always in your corner, here are your hosts, Jen Mertland and Monica Weekly. Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Fight Club. What's up, Jennifer Mertland? Hey, Monica. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Are you? Yeah, I'm chilling. What What are you happiest about today? <laughs> that it's nice outside. Yay! It's nice out in the natty. We're starting to see a little bit of fall maybe sneak in. Not too much, though. Can't have too much. <sighs> Can't have too much. What's your least favorite season? Because we get all four of them here in Cincinnati. Winter is the worst. What is winter? Yeah, 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 winter's, yeah. what's your winter? Oh, winter. I freaking... Well, for the last 12 years, I've told Sharon, I'm not living here for one more winter. <laughs> one more winter. I'm not living here. Empty threats. Guess where we are? Still here. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. All right, guys. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of Real Estate Fight Club. We love that you're here and appreciate that you're here. And today, Jen and I are going to duke it out over this. Mm-hmm. Does it matter? what type of car you drive. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And I forget where this came up. I think it came up in um, that one like mastermind we did. Yeah. I've heard agents talk about this a lot and I've done some thinking about it, but I'm curious, where do you stand? No, you start. Oh, all right. All right. I always um, start. Okay. So I'm going to give a blanket statement of yes, it actually matters. Caveat. That doesn't mean you can't be successful if you have, if you don't have the car yet, because we are in be, do, have, right? You be the type of agents, you do the things the top agent's doing, and then you can I'm have. I'm really surprised you say that it matters. Why does it matter? Okay, I think. Because um, then the next sentence, or same sentence, run on sentence, was that it does, that you doesn't matter. No, I, no, I think you can be successful, but I think, um, I think as part of the package, it matters. And here's why. Tell me. One of the main things you're trying to accomplish with a seller or a buyer is uh, um, confidence. Would you agree that when your buyer or seller has confidence in you, that the deal is easier, you're able to do your job more easily? Would you agree with that? I think it's, yeah, conf- well, yeah, confidence and trust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Confidence and trust, but you know, confidence, like this is the right person for the job. This person knows what they're doing. They're going to lead me through it. Um, I think if I show up to, you know, a $800,000 listing in Cincinnati and I have my car from, you know, I don't know, a beater car of some sort that I've had forever because cars don't matter to me. And I appreciate that. That's great. I get it. I'm not arguing with that. But if you, if that's what you've got in your life, because cars aren't important to you and you pull up in that, I think you're going to lose some confidence, right or wrong. The sellers are going to lose confidence in you. Does this person sell a lot of houses? Does this person have success? This is a, a seller that doesn't know you. Oh, knows me or maybe doesn't know me. I'm not sure. Maybe has been referred, you know, where there's a little bit of trust from the referral, but they're looking for evidence of success. And if I pull up in um, some sort of, you know, old car that indicates that I might not have sold as many number of houses. Now, again, they're wrong. If that's just or the car that- you're like, dang, I feel bad for her. Let, we need to give her this. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that. I've heard that argument too, is like the hungry agent, right? If you say I'm hungry. I say, okay, I'm going to like agree. And, but I don't know. Here's my answer is no, I don't think it matters. Okay. However, I like your points about- I think there's two things that you said. One, it does matter internally how you feel. I drive, I think there's different levels of cars. Actually, funny story. (laughs) I was going to make this book for women, like when I was like 20, and it was like a picture, coffee table picture book. Yeah. About how to choose your man by the car he drives. (laughs) That's classic. Because I think- Because assumptions are made, right? Well, right. Well, but see, I think like, it depends. Like people are different. If you're a person who- loves and cares about cars and they mean something to you, then it matters. Right. And this is the same conversation we had on the, one of the episodes, I forget which one it was, where we talked about, doesn't matter what you wear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, 
I was also like, no, I don't think it matters what you wear either. But there is a, there are some caveats. So one is how you feel internally about yourself. So I'm the type of person where I, I drive a reasonable car. I mean, Sometimes it's an Acura. Sometimes I drive a Lexus, but not like the high end of either one of those, like mm-hmm. the medi- medium one of those. Yeah. But I, li- I like cars and I like those cars specifically. I think they have a good value, mm-hmm. but I'm also the same person who wears jeans to an $800,000 listing mm-hmm. and a black shirt. Mm-hmm. Because to me, like, I know I may look, there is perception, which is what you're talking about, right? There's mm-hmm. a perception in that. But I think when you talk to people, for me, I can my experience and conversation with them carries beyond whatever they were thinking before. I get that. I get that. And I think it's just, that's a little bit of an uphill battle you walk into the house with. If you, if, if the perception has already been made, like, wait a second, is this person up for the job? You're right. You can do that. You got to knock it out of the park with evidence. And then they're like, yeah, I don't care what beater she has in the garage, like in the driveway, like this is my girl. But the same thing, though, too, can go the other way. Like you drive this really nice car. And most of the time, if the seller is inviting you over, they want to hire you. Don't F it up. Right. Right. So, Like it's usually what you say that messes you up. This is true. This is true. I do think um, your point about how you sort of how you show up and how you feel in the car is important, just like the outfit. I think um, if it gives you confidence, if it makes you happy, I'm a car person too. I love, I would rather spend more money on a car than a house, you know, like if I had to pick, Um, I'm a car person. I love that. So I do, I drive a really nice car because I like to have, What is it? I drive a Mercedes and I think they're they're well built and for the for too what much you get. money on the maintenance. No. Wow. I mean, not if you don't beat it up. Oh well, I mean. Um, anyway, I, but I think if I'm trying to set myself up at a certain level of success, that that's part of the puzzle. It's the that puzzle piece doesn't have to be there, but you gotta carry some other stuff. If that's not the piece. What about, let me ask you this. So let's say you, I think that there's something too for kind of matching your, uh, like your client base, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're the type of client base, that's like high end luxury, multi-million dollar houses, Mm -hmm. and that's who you run in circles with. I think there's something to be said for fitting in, Mm -hmm. in the car that you drive and the way that you dress and whatever. Right. Yeah. And the same thing goes for any, like any type of, I don't know, I guess I want to call it price point, but I don't know if it's just about the price, but it it may be right. Because if you, if you show up in your Mercedes and your entire client base is, I don't, I mean, low end tenants, I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. Right. You know I get what I, you're saying though. I understand what you're saying. It's not going to be weird. And is the opposite true? Like if your entire client base is multi-million dollar resort property and you're showing up in a hoopty. Mm. The only reason I'll bar, disagree with that is, I, I mean, I like the idea of, you know, mirror and matching. I think there's importance yeah. to that. I don't think when it comes to a car for this conversation, here's why. Let's say I was in trouble and I needed an attorney and I know we always go to attorneys and I lived, you know, my house was $80,000 house or something, right. but I needed an attorney. I don't want an attorney to show up in a matching car to what I drive. I want the attorney to demonstrate a level of success and that therefore conveys to trust. I think I'm going to lose some people on this discussion. Like, as I'm saying it out loud, I can see where people are going to disagree. (laughs) Yeah. But I just, I just think it, it conveys, um, when you leave to my side, I know you guys love Monica. (laughs) You uh, it's okay over here. No, 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 no. (laughs) I don't know. I'm going to, I think there, I'm think I'm disagreeing. I think that there's a range in that a car is a, there's a large acceptable range that if you take care of your car, I, I don't think it necessarily matters for most people. Mm-hmm. I, as long as you aren't choosing that car, as long as it doesn't take away your confidence mm-hmm. of you as a successful person, it's kind mm-hmm. of like 
listen, we listen, ladies, you have those pair of shoes that you put on that you're like, these are my shit kicking shoes and I can do whatever I want, say whatever I want, do whatever I want in these shoes. It's like a power suit. You've heard the power suit. Like you put it on and you like, you do the power pose and you're like, I'm going to get this thing. If that's what the car does for you. And listen, in this society, it is part of the package just is. I don't know. Um, I still don't think it is because that doesn't, it doesn't necessarily do it for me within a range. Right. Like I agreed. I did try to go down because I was traveling a lot. So I was like, I don't need this big Lexus payment. Let me go get this (laughs) Honda. But it was like a terrible, it was from like, it was an old. Oh Oh my God. You bought it like with change in your pocket. Like Monica, you had to use a key to get into the car. Oh no. So kept, Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Running into the car. I'm like, the door's not opening. I'm like, shit, I have to use a key. You show up to list my house in a car that needs a key. You're out. I'm just You're saying. out. To it's me, true. I like, there's a range, right? Like I like to have my Acura. I like to have my Lexus, but like, not, I don't know, but if I'm like in too fancy of a car, like, I don't like that either. No, no, no. I understand. And you don't have to have a Mercedes or, a, you know, a freaking. Actually, I have one question for you. What? Do you have a, um, the license plate that's like the special one? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to know what it says? I do. Yes. Yeah. It says Y R R L T R. Oh my God. I'm your realtor. My God. Cause it's like my agent, Monica is like your realtor. So when my people are following me to the next house, <laughs> they're like, you're real. Yeah. That's my realtor up in front of me. I know it's so totally cheesy. There's something that's on my mind. Yeah. Um, because I agree with you. There's a range. You don't have to have a Mercedes, but we're talking about not having a beater either. You know, like I agree with you on that. I'm not saying you have to have top line, whatever. I also think it's okay. If you are a Jeep girl, yeah. And you drive a really nice Jeep. You should be yourself more so than buy a car that doesn't fit you. I think you can roll up in a I really nice it. Jeep. Be you, boo. Be you, boo. You're a motorcycle gal. Bring your Harley to the listing appointment. Yeah. It's nice. Like, it's good. You're going to have a conversation about that with the guy or the gal or whatever. Whatever. Um, yeah. So I agree. And on the other side of that coin, you roll up in some cheesy ass like two hundred thousand dollar race car with the arms that lift up like you're the Lambo doors you're losing people you're maybe losing not them. they'd be like hey can i get a ride in that yeah that's true look if you're gonna drive something that people want to talk about drive a tesla and give them rides yeah and let them people experience tesla let them experience zero to 60 in four seconds. It is Less nice. Less than that, isn't it? Dang. It probably is. Anyway, you ready to go back to our corner? Yeah, let's take a break. All right, let's take a short break. Hear a word from our partners. And when we return, we will have the final punches. I'll open the gate so you guys can come my way. Hi, guys. It's Monica and Jen from the Real Estate Fight Club. Hey. We just want to make sure to let you know that we have extremely cool partners in this great podcast that we have. We can't bring a show to you every week without our great partners. So we want you to go click below and uh, check out their links and the special offers that they offer our Real Estate yeah. Fight Club listeners like you. We've got some good ones. So we have a great offer from Vulcan 7, which is the dialer that I use to get all the numbers to start, you know, pleasantly, persistently harassing people. Love it. Uh, we They're got, the best, the best in the biz. The best. Yeah, they truly are. We got ghost poster, which is Monica's. Pro- hey, hey Monica's click product, the product. Yeah. We've got our coach, John Kitchens. He's whoop, the- whoop. Yep. And then real support solutions, which provides like administrative help and training. So They're awesome. Like those links, babies. All right. Yeah. Welcome back. Let's get back to the battle inside of the ring and close out with our final round here. Um, Jen, I was thinking about something while we were listening to our partner's messages, which we appreciate so much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Sharon, my wife, she drives a very nice Honda Accord. It's a very nice, lovely car. Yeah. I think that style. she doesn't care about cars. Yeah. She's, she like, she literally just wants something that gets her from A to B. We just have different, and she'd rather have jewelry. I don't buy jewelry, you know, like. I'm so, actually surprised that your car is so like pimped out. Like <laughs> pimped out? You drive a drug dealer car. 
I do not. It doesn't have tinted glass. Now Sharon's Honda Accord has tinted glass. Like it looks pimped out. No, it doesn't have a doesn't 1990s have drug dealer. Mine is a very basic, like a small SUV. It's very practical, solid, safe car. A Mercedes SUV. SUVs are meant to be haul stuff. How it's many a small SUV? <laughs> it's the GLC. It's not the big GLE daddy. Do not go together in a sentence. Come on. Oh, you're killing me. That's like off-roading and Jeep Cherokees. I've never seen a Jeep Cherokee off-road. <laughs> nope. Agreed. Stupid. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. I'm sorry. Carry on. Anyway, um, my I think my point was about the idea of feeling comfortable first. Yeah. But also recognizing that there's a reality in perception. And that's part of our game as a seller is our perception. That's what our marketing represents is our brand. I believe your look represents your brand. Like, look, you're in jeans. That's your brand. Good, solid, awesome. My, you know, my brand, if I'm trying to cater to a higher level client should be a certain look in a car. Like, I think it's just about your brand. Who are you? But I, I'm going to steal, I'm a, for my final point, I'm going to steal what you said before the break, which was it has to be in line with like who you are. Mm -hmm. So like be yourself, don't be somebody that you're not. Mm -hmm. And you will attract people that want to do business with you. Mm -hmm. so. so do you think you wouldn't be yourself in a, um, a dress? No. Oh, no, I was thinking of a car. Your car? No. A dress for sure. No. In car my car, you wouldn't drive my car. Have you seen my car? It's pretty basic looking. I don't No, I don't want it. It's not fancy. It's nice. It ain't fancy. No, it's the license plate too. I don't <laughs> personalize license plates. I think it's ridiculous. What is, you don't have one? No, I don't have one. Of course not. I think it's dumb. I've always had one. No, and I, I, don't I take have great job. Did the holder that says like realtor. I think it's dumb. No, I don't do that. I don't do that. There oh, is a draw the line there. Oh. I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> line drawn. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to have to be the end of today's battle, unless you have some other point or fun to make fun of me. <laughs> no, no, that's it. All right. Good. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do us a favor and share it with one of your colleagues. If you've ever had this conversation anywhere in your office, share this. Let's see. We'd love to hear your opinion and others' opinions. Please go to our Facebook page, which is Real Estate Fight Club Podcast on Facebook. Oh, yes. And if you are curious about EXP and have want to schedule a private conversation with Monica and I, feel free to give us a call at 513-400-1691. All right, Monica. Thank you. I've got to go wax my car. <laughs> See you next. Oh, wait. Don't you think a clean car is a given? Oh, shit. Yeah. Rewind. Yes. To this. Yes. Clean your car. Clean your car inside and outside. Correct. Correct. You never know when somebody's popping in your car. Oh my God. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.